Okay. Um, mine's very informal, but before I start talking about the projects I've got available for you to work on if you're interested, I would say that for those of you who are thinking about the possibility of a PhD down the track, uh, this opportunity of a six unit of credit research project is really a really good one to take up because you can actually decide whether you like research or not. So you can discount that as an option. Uh, you can decide whether you like that particular topic or not. Or if you've already decided on a particular topic, it gives you a great opportunity to, to go into some depth um, in getting more familiar with that area and finding, finding the gaps in the literature, which is really what you have to target with a PhD. And also if you like your supervisor. That's a very, that's, <laughs> yes, that's very important. And whether they like you as well. Um, <laughs> that there's this reciprocity that needs to, to occur. Uh, so so it is a, it, it's a good opportunity and obviously it's an opportunity to get some public, uh, a publication or... Um, more than one would be a real bonus. Um, one is pretty good. So the sort of work, the sort of research that I'm involved in is with, I suppose, what you describe as vulnerable populations. So um, I'm working with um, Sally and Andrew and others on the Ted Knoffs um, project, which is the ARC project. So happy to talk to people um, about that. But I'm but most of the work I'm involved with is, is HIV related. And uh, so I work with and they get described in various ways. CAPS are key affected populations, or MARPs, most at risk populations. All these acronyms come out. Uh, but essentially, these, these, are, these are groups in, so the, the countries I've worked in are mainly you know, Asia Pacific. Uh, and these are groups who generally don't have very good protection in terms of um, you know, the laws. So often they're engaged in activities that are illegal. So we're talking about sex workers, uh, drug users, men who have sex with men. These are often the groups that are most vulnerable to HIV because of the lack of protections available to them. Uh, so the work that I tend to do is what's described as um, integrated biological behavioural surveillance. So that, that involves collecting behavioural data through surveys, usually cross-sectionally. Uh, and, and also usually collecting blood and urine to test for HIV and other STIs. And at the moment I have two databases of that nature. One um, for sex workers, which we collected in Port Moresby, that was for male and female sex workers. And the other in Fiji, we collected data in Suva and Lautoka, so on either side of the main island of Fiji, from men who have sex with men and transgender. Uh, and there's probably a number of um, possible papers from those data sets. So the sorts of data we collect, but the behavioural data is obviously demographics. We collect drug and alcohol use, uh, knowledge of HIV transmission, attitudes towards people with HIV, and very detailed questions around sexual practice. So who's having sex with who, uh, whether people are using condoms, that sort of thing. So the types of analyses that we'd be looking at in these papers are mainly, um, you know, a lot of bivariate analyses, probably a lot of cross-tabulation chi-square, and then maybe some uh, binary logistic regression, multivariable analysis. For those of you who are interested in, in developing or honing your quantitative skills. Um, I've also just conducted a study in Timor-Leste, which was an estimate of the size of key populations at most risk of HIV. And we used some, we used a couple of new techniques that hadn't been well, well um, validated. So there could be an interesting paper there on the methods, but there's also some interesting, um, you know, just in terms of publishing the results themselves um, could be interesting. And, and there's also, in terms of cultural, cultural aspects, there's some interesting dynamics with the men who have sex with men group. There's a group that identifies very much like we would perhaps say sort of gay identified. There's also another group that's sort of straight identified and they, they're not as well connected with services. So that, that makes, you know, that, that, that's something that is worth exploring. So I'm happy to talk with anyone about these. Um, I didn't, uh, you call me Patrick, which is great, that's my name, but my surname is Ralston, if anyone, if those of you don't know me, I know a lot of you anyway. Um, and 
I haven't got anything prepared, but I'm sure you can find me. I mean, I know a lot of you anyway, but I'm sure you can look me up. Okay, thanks.